Hey, 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 welcome back to another episode of The In Between. I'm your host, Elizabeth Cheney, and y'all, you are getting another fantastic guest on The In Between this week. I have Logan Lewis here. He is a fellow podcaster. He is the host of Your Morning Drive, and he's also the owner of Hammerhead Creations, which before we started recording, I was like, by the way, what is Hammerhead Creations? And he's like, oh, it's where I, it's my network, like the, where I host the podcast through, I do the marketing, da, da, da. I'm like, so wait, you're with a network and you're like, well, this is my network. And I'm like, oh my God. So you're just a badass. So owner of Hammerhead Creations and fellow internet friend. Yes. So Logan, welcome to the in-between. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. This is so great. I love inter- uh, introducing. Wow. I love interviewing and having other podcasters on because one, you get it, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, the grind, you know, the hustle, all that kind of stuff. And um, it's just like fun to talk about. So first question I have for you just to kick things off is, who are you? Tell the audience, who is Logan Lewis of Your Morning Drive of Hammerhead Creations? I feel like that's such a loaded question. I'm not going to wear these this time. Okay. Because my ears just suck sometimes. Totally fine. Transparency. Um, <laughs> and you know what? Maybe I'm going to follow that and take mine off eventually too. Maybe. So um, I, who am I? That's such a loaded question for me. Um, I am a dude that <laughs> is just trying to make it i guess okay. I, I don't just really a know. dude being a dude just a dude being a dude <laughs> disguised as another dude to quote uh tropic thunder yes um but I, I i i'm a podcaster i'm a creator i am a marketing guy i'm a i'm just a dude just trying to make it work <laughs> right the why i'm struggling so much to describe myself and because you've been podcasting for a long time because that's one thing i want to talk about is your morning drive is not your first podcast like, I mean, like, or is it more like, not that you manage multiple podcasts, but it's like your podcast has evolved and changed over time. So how long have you been podcasting? What got you into podcasting? What are you trying to do in this crazy world? Mm-hmm. Or are you just literally just having fun, just trying to share stories? So all of it. So love it. I have been doing it f- since May of... 2018. Oh, wow. So 2018-ish, a minute. 2018-ish, okay. I guess. Yeah, uh, for a minute. Um, 2018, 2017, 2019, somewhere in there. I have it written down somewhere. Um, horrible memory. ADHD. <laughs> right. We talked about this on a- my episode as oh, well. Oh, yeah. By the way, everyone yes. listening, this is like part one. So this comes out today. You're listening to it. My episode with Logan comes out like in two days, like yes, Friday. Yes, on yeah, Friday. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the following Friday. Yes. So you'll get my whole shtick and more of his shtick then. So yes. you know, bear with us. Yeah, the, the, the seats are reversed right. on that episode. So you'll Literally. Get to, you'll get to hear all about her. And today you get to hear all about me. Yay! Um, so been doing it for several years. Um, I started it because I was never really doing anything creative at the time. So like me being creative is something that has been born out of the last like 10 years or so. I wasn't really? always super creative. I had like interests in creative like things. Like I loved to draw or I loved okay. to write in like high school, but I never was like an art guy. I never did theater. I never did any of that stuff. So I, 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 I never had that desire. Okay. But I did like being creative. I did find art and art and writing class more fun than math and science. Okay. Um, I grew up in a very, um, both of my parents are very intelligent. My dad's an engineer, has always been a, a, a civil engineer and very engineering, very math focused household. And I always was so bad at math, <laughs> but I loved writing and reading and really? all of those things. So... I think that's a creative person in a way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I appreciated reading and writing a lot as a young kid, but I never really put it into like, well, I'm a creative. But then again, I don't think the term or identifying yourself as a creative existed when we were kids. I agree. Like you were an engineer or you were an, you were an artist. Right. I was going to say artist. A creative is like such a weird millennial term for right. someone who just enjoys doing creative stuff. Things, right. Um, so you, I used to think podcast was like something that like old people did. Like only <laughs> really? old people listen to podcasts. Is that because like, of NPR? I was like, yeah, like <laughs> NPR, like my grandparents listened to like Rush Limbaugh on the, on the radio. Like, <laughs> yes. I was like, okay, so. And they have like a more serious tone. It's like, yes, here we are. Very, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, welcome back to uh, ABC News. Um, we have serious things to yeah, talk about today. Murder. Um, <laughs> Death. <laughs> depression. Famine. Tragedy. Okay. 
<laughs> Let's see how many bad things we can name. Uh, poverty. Um, so I, my buddy in college started listening to a podcast that was done by, if, you, if you're if you familiar with the name, it was a very Gen Z name. Uh, like Total Frat Move was the company. They were kind of in affiliation with- Wait, like, wait, wait. What? You know the guy behind that? Well, I, I know, yeah, kind of. I, I don't know them. Like personally, personally, but I know of the content that they made. Yeah, yeah, and yeah their, okay. Their whole company. I'm familiar with that because my husband was a frat guy, which I so was. So he not probably a story was obsessed girl. with like. Total he was frat TFM. Move. He don't TFM. Get TFM. TFM. Yeah. Oh, dude, I know. Me and him probably have a lot of shared interests. <laughs> um, fishing. <laughs> Do you like fishing? Uh, well, Baseball? It's been a long time since I've been fishing. Um, <laughs> I'd love to go, actually. I've been thinking about that lately. I would love to go fishing he again. He will go fishing with you. He's okay. like always talking about, I just want to fish. I'm like, what? Who are you? I don't I don't even have a fishing pole. <laughs> I need to He is like 12, invest. so. Okay, wait. He's sweet. got you. Um, so he started listening to one of the TFM like podcasts. Okay. And he turned me on to him. He's like, hey, dude, you should listen to these guys. They're hilarious. And they just sit around and they BS each other for an hour. And I was like, yeah, podcasts are so, like, old. Like, right. what are these young guys? They're probably just trying to, like, I don't know, be creative. Right. He was like, just give them a lesson. And I gave him a lesson, and I got obsessed right. and hooked. Yeah. And I was like, these guys get to have fun every day. Like, they recorded an episode e- either every day or every other day. And that was, like, oh part of, like, TFM's, like, they had, like, a media side uh, where okay. they did, like. So it was, like, their job. Yeah, it was their like, job. Not they they were getting myself. paid to do this. Okay. And I was like, golly, these people, these guys have it great. They okay. get to be themselves. They, uh, Their listeners know them. They know their families. They know, like, these are the people I was referring to on my episode. This will make sense when you listen oh, to my episode. Got it, got it, got it. So, um, like, I know all about these guys and their whole career trajectories. I know yeah. their journey. And I listened to them for months. And then, like, one morning, it was a Saturday morning, I remember waking up and thinking, like, I want to start a podcast. What should I do? And I didn't even plan it out. I went to Best Buy, bought a microphone, and recorded that day. Oh, wow. Didn't plan it. Didn't have a name even, so really. So interesting. You're I, just inspired by their, like, fun, their shtick, their yes, camaraderie. Just yes. be able to shoot the shit and it not be in some sophisticated form Absolutely. or specific topic. Okay. Absolutely. And, you know, I didn't have any structure in place. Like, I just was like, I'm going to buy a, mi- a microphone and talk into it. And That's I'm going to have fun with this. I'm a very, like, do it kind of person. No, I, 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 I love this. Like, I everyone's get, like, different. If I get an idea that pops into my head, I think about it for about 20 minutes. And if it sticks, I'm going to go and make that thing happen. That's your threshold. That's my threshold. Okay. If it doesn't stick, I'm like, okay, maybe it's maybe I'll revisit it later. But, like, if someone's like, hey, do you want to go to get Target and look at mirrors? I'm like, all right, let's go right now. Okay. Let's do it right now. Okay. And, and like my wife will be like, hey, we don't we don't have to go right now. I'm like, oh no, you want to go look at mirrors? Let's go do it right now. Okay. Right now. Like I'm a doer. Like okay. I'm not like, a, oh, let's think about it for a while. <laughs> no, no, no. If you want a mirror, let's go get the damn mirror. Like kind of person. Okay. Like let's get the shit done. Like, hey, can you take out the trash? Okay. Oh, well, you didn't need to rush and do Holy it right shit. now. Holy shit. Talk to my husband. <laughs> well, <laughs> I will say <laughs> some days I, uh, I, I'm a little lazier than, than I <laughs> normally sh- am, but um, I just kind of like, once I get an idea, I don't like to sit on it for a long time. I want, okay. I want to make it happen. So I went, bought my, recorded that day and my first episode is horrible. Oh yeah. But um, I go back and humble myself sometimes and listen to it because it's, uh, I was, I recorded it bright and early. I God, I feel like I was yawning a lot. Probably I had just no woke idea what you were up. doing. No idea. What's going to come out of my mouth? Horrible. I was burping probably. <laughs> I was like breathing into the microphone. <sighs> like <laughs> all of that. Yeah. And uh, at the time I called it. And now that I know, listen, Liz, this is this is going to be such a great moment because your eyes are about to widen. Okay. At the time I knew I wanted to talk about movies and entertainment. Okay. But I was like, I need a title that's like niche, but not niche enough. Yeah. So I titled the first iteration of Your Morning Drive. So Your Morning Drive has evolved and I'll talk about that. Yeah. But- your morning drive started out as hold on to your butts. Stop. I swear. I swear. And for those who don't know, it's like my favorite movie, Jurassic Park, that that's from. Obsessed with Jurassic Which, Park. Okay, so when me and Logan were, as a side note, ADHD roll with us here, yeah. when we were interviewing for his episode just like, you know, a second ago, um, we got into the topic of like movies. Like it was like your like rapid fire questions for your yes, guests. And yes. you're like, which favorite movie? And I was like, first off, Jurassic Park. And you're looking at me and your eyes are big. And in my head, I'm thinking, do we not like this movie? Did I say something wrong? And you're like, obsessed. So 
I love that that was the episode, like the way your, your show yes. is called. Yes. Um, and Jurassic Park is our favorite movie. Yes. And that's why we're best friends yes. now. Yes, absolutely. So we started out as Hold On To Your Butts. Amazing. And Hold On To Your Butts had its own kind of life cycle and journey. And I, I got to a point where I was like, Hold On To Your Butts is a great <laughs> title. Great. And it's very niche. People who know, know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also was very restricted in that yes. Hold On To Your Butts is probably a movie podcast and a movie podcast only. Yeah. And I, as a lo- dude who, like you, love, loves pop culture, I want to talk about pop culture mm-hmm. and TV and music and anything, memes, it. If, it, if, if it makes sense to what we're talking about, like address something that's going on in the news, like anything, like not too politicky, but like just, you know, yeah, general relevant, things. Yeah. Relevant things. Exactly. So I rebranded, hold on to your butts. And at this point I've welcomed a couple co-hosts to do it with me. We rebranded it to, uh, the binge boys. Oh, I like that. That's clever. So, Cause you binging TV, yeah, yeah, binge yeah. movies, you know, and we did that. That was the longest iteration of the podcast it, before getting re. I mean, I changed the logo a couple times, did a rebrand here and there, but it stayed the binge boys for a pretty big bulk of these years. That's that I've cool. Done it. And then about 12 months ago, maybe about a year ago. What am I? 12 months ago. That's like <laughs> such an old person. Say, about 12 months ago. Just say, just say <laughs> a year, just say a year. Um, about a year ago, I rebranded binge boys into something solo. So I, uh, I don't want to say I got rid of my, my co host had other obligations, other things going on in their lives. So we cut ties. Yeah. But I'm still friends with you them. You had to pivot. Yeah. They, we pivoted. They, they had to focus on other things in their life I and I can't fault them for that. Every creative journey has pivots. In Absolutely. 1000%. So I pivoted and then it was just me. And I talked about on your episode is that I did solo episodes and I hate solo episodes wow. because I, I did them the for months. Wow. by myself and I hated it Ooh, and I was you and like are different my friend and I was operating under this name the binge boys well I, w- I was the only boy there was no other bingers unless with you talk me. about your other personalities right absolutely <laughs> yeah my my 50 personalities like the like split like yes, James McAvoy right. <laughs> um so I rebranded it to something called Logan's Lowdown okay which was the same show yeah, yeah, yeah. entertainment coverage but then it also was broader I can right. talk about other things that weren't necessary movies and TV because it's the, my like show like tagline was like things that Logan finds interesting. Yeah, most I like of the that. time it was movies. Yeah, but if I wanted to interview somebody, I could interview someone and it be under that umbrella. I also you had this. I used to write this newsletter for Substack, and, not for Substack. Okay. I just published it yeah. on Substack, and uh, I did like a. Uh, like almost like an audible audiobook okay. version of that newsletter. And I would also publish that to the Logan's Lowdown oh, podcast. Nice. Okay. And the newsletter was also called Logan's Lowdown. So it all <laughs> like all the brand, the brand, like all things me essentially contributed to, that. contributed to that Logan's Lowdown name. Yeah. But then probably your morning drive is very new okay. uh, for, as of the last couple months. I noticed so, that when I was like doing my research. And yes. Kind of looking you at probably stuff. scrolled down and you're like, oh, it's Logan's Lowdown. Yeah. Oh, it's Binge Boys. Oh, what the hell's happening? Um, Who is this guy? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So I, years ago, when I got real obsessed with the podcast stuff, okay. I started a bunch of podcasts. I was oh. doing like six at a time. Holy shit. Yeah. That stresses me out just hearing that. Yep. So I was doing one called... On top of a job? Yes. <laughs> on top of a job. I had no life. Bless your heart. No life. My dating life was... I was finding dates to go on around my podcast podcast schedule. Wow. So I did a podcast called What Are We? And it was a dating and relationship podcast. I hosted with a girl that I formerly had gone out with. Shout Lindsay. She, uh, we actually just the other day reminisced on the fact that we, wow, we really did a podcast. It was only like 25 episodes. That's a lot. Um, That's a lot. But we did. And we talked about all kinds of topics about relationships and texting and dating apps. And it was so much fun. Yeah. Um, What are we? That's a good name. What are we? Um, and it was great. The logo was a, uh, it was, it was an iPhone, uh, iMessage text screen. And it was like the thought, the text bubble came in and it said, what are we question mark? And then like Clever. on the other side, it was like three dots typing or whatever. <gasps> Oh my God. That's so good. So fun. So fun. You might have to revitalize that one day. Maybe. That's too clever. Maybe. Too good. Very good. Um, so, it's copyrighted for anyone listening. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so so we, we do that for some time. I stop. And then I start this another one. Uh, well, I really didn't start this one. People came to me and they're like, hey, we want to join your like mini podcast empire. There's some dudes from high school <laughs> and they started it and it was called, dude, what about sports? <laughs> Because they say that, like, everything I talk about, because I'm not a very sports-heavy kind of guy. I'm not, not a sports girl. So they said they, they called that podcast that because I cover every topic except sports. Love. So when they text me, they're like, dude, why don't you cover sports? So they got their podcast name. Dude, what about sports? So they did that, and I was kind of like the loose producer of that. Okay. Um, and then I did another one. Uh, for uh, it was a spinoff of the Binge Boys. Okay, and it was called Binging Batch, and me mm. and a female co-host got together every week, and we discussed the latest episode of The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Oh, and I covered it week by week. Wow, and I did that for probably 50, 60 episodes. Damn, that's some commitment, sir. It was, and then lastly, I had this show called The Exchange, and The Exchange was something that besides. Binge Boys, the exchange was like, I loved the exchange. And the exchange was exactly what we're doing right now. It was interview-based. It was conversations. It was, I would sit down with anybody who wanted to sit down with me and talk to them about whatever they want. Um, in fact, the exchange was its rebranded name. Whatever I want was what it originated as. Oh. And it was just, I would sell it as, oh, we talk about whatever we want. I love that. So I rebranded it to the exchange because whatever I want. Oh, someone, you are a marketing guy. You're so, this, this so, is all really well so done. So rebranding. So like. But just, but even the concepts, like very well done. My, thank you. My biggest critics say like, quit rebranding. It's so much. And I'm like, yeah, it is. As we talk about it, I did a lot of rebranding. So I get to this point now where I'm like, you know what? I'm burnt out on the movie podcast I don't want to cover that stuff by myself, and I can't find a good co-host. Not you, to say that my co-hosts weren't good, but I, I can't find someone consistent. I was going to say, the consistency is probably what the problem is. Consistency and their level of commitment never matched mine. Right. Which, I mean, no one's going to put in the amount of work that you put on right. in your podcast. That's why I don't have a, a co-host. So I never found that person. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take Logan's Lowdown, and I'm going to change the name of that to be something more, again, still broad, mm -hmm. that I can, you know, I can still talk about anything I want. Right, give you that range. But um, I was trying to think of a name, and I couldn't find a good name. And my wife, Catherine, was like, well, what is what do all your shows have in common? And I was like, nothing really. I mean, I was like, I just release them all. Whenever I do release them, I don't release them at 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 9 a.m. I release them always at 5 a.m. And my thought process was always like, well, some people in other time zones might get up at a different time for work. They might have early commutes. They might have long commutes. Right. So some people might be waking up for work at 4 or 5 in the morning to get right. ready for a long commute. I always put my episodes out at 5 a.m. What if I called it Your Morning Drive? Ooh. Because you could listen to it on your drive in the morning. Mm -hmm. And it's not s restricted to a certain... Right. Subject. I could talk about true crime if I wanted to. I could talk about movies if I wanted to. Right. Or most of the time, it's an interview based. Sports. <laughs> Sports. Um, I could if I wanted to, but I don't because I, I prefer this format right here. And did you want to take the name Logan out of it so it wouldn't just be so solo to you? Because I do have this mentor too who said, listen, I'm going to give you some advice here. And he said, people like Conan O'Brien or Theo Vaughn or these comedians that have their own podcasts, their name is in the title because that's the selling point. Right. He was like, no offense. Right now, you're a nobody. You're a small time guy. You're not, your name isn't the selling point to your right. content. The Logan show. Right. It's right. not Joe Rogan experience. It's, right. Joe Rogan is selling tickets to anything because of his name, Joe Rogan. Right. Whereas Logan, no one gives a shit. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. So why not change it to something that has my name ripped out of it? That's what he told me. He said, okay. rip your name out of the title, rebrand it, and interview people like you love to do. So I did. Your morning drive. It's kind of existential in a way. Yes. A little bit. Sorry for that ramble of my history. No, I think it. it's fascinating. And one thing I want to comment on before we go into your, your morning drive. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Your girl's still uh, recovering from some of her allergies. You and I both. Gosh, Georgia just killing us with it. But... um. Horrible. I, I'm always so fascinated by hearing people's like origin stories. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, like I have a bias with the podcasting because I'm a podcaster as well. And to hear you say, I just was like, I want to do a podcast. I'm just going to start. And I started that day. I'm just like, oh, wow. That is uh, like, I'm so impressed by that because I think, I mean, granted, I have my own mental health shit going on. But like, <laughs> I think about how much resistance I had to just starting 
and thinking I had to have this whole plan and all this put together. And you were like, I just think this is really cool. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about, but I'm just going to do it and I'm going to do it. I just want to comment on that. Like, that is a level of confidence and grounding that I don't know if you recognize within yourself, but I think is very impressive. Thank you. That's nice of you to say. I've never thought about it like that, but like I, especially because you said you didn't view yourself as an a creep. I cre- la, la, la. just got tongue tied. Especially because you said you didn't view yourself as a creative growing up. Correct. But I would argue that it must have always been there. Had to have been. Yeah. Um, but I just want to comment like that's very grounded and and in your confidence and your and your creativity. So, anywho, your morning drive. Thank Love you. it. Very Thank deep. You. Very very nice of you to say. So, I but then also on the flip side of it, my biggest um I say my biggest critics. It's always my parents and my wife that tell me the feedback that I need to hear. Wait, to not push your head? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, that too. They always said, you know, if you had had a strict plan from the get-go, your morning drive might have been what you were at the beginning. 370 mm-hmm. episodes ago. Holy shizies. So impressive. So that's why whenever I tell people like, oh, go, like if, if I'm going to get a guest and they're like, oh, what should I, where should I find a show to listen to? I'm like, your morning drive. But just so you know, like if you keep scrolling, you're going to be like, what? why is there so much movie talk on this? Right. And it's like, well, it, it, the name evolved. Some people said I should have gone back into the exchange feed, changed that, and then just carried on with that. But Binge Boy's was something that I did for so long. And yeah. I don't want to say I built up such a huge audience because I didn't, but I just, it was just the most consistent Instagram right. account. Like it had the most history. Yeah. So I was like, I'm just going to roll with that. Right. It's also your legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So yeah. I think it's interesting that you, instead of starting like a whole new podcast, you just pivoted, you reshifted, you rebranded. So it's just one like flow of just the different variations of what led you to your morning drive. Yeah. So, because I've noticed with your morning drive, you have all kinds of different conversations. And like the in-between, it's a, it's kind of a similar idea. Like the in-between, navigating life's in-betweens. Yes, we get deep here. Yeah. I like to introspect. But similar concept, I wanted, I didn't want to be confined to one right. topic. Because I do love pop culture as well, which I know we're going to get into. But I just lost my train of thought. ADHD, where's the thought? Find the, the meal train. Where's it going? You lost it. It's gone. No, don't even start there. Your morning drive, in-between. Why did you say ADHD. I lost it? I lost it because you, you lost told it me because I, lost I spoke it. it in existence. You're looking out that way. Like she's it, looking that way because she's looking for it. Th- yeah, we're looking for the thought in the back of the head. Like the eyeballs are not moving, but it's because they're in the back processing. You the were going somewhere with it, and yes. it's gone. The in between. I'm, an, I'm a realist girl. Oh my it's gosh, gone. About It'll all come back the topics, to you. It will. Didn't restrict you. The name. We have very similar styles of the shows. Yes. Oh, there you go. Boom. There she it is. Found it. So. The in-between, having ability to talk whatever, but, you know, there is still kind of a flow, whether it's intentional or not. Because I think right. I told you this on your episode where I'm like, self-love just kind of gets brought up sometimes, like, right. in some capacity. There's, like, so, an overwhelming, you have an overwhelming... Arch of that. Arch of a subject. Yes. Whereas, like, I think where you're going with this, mine does not. Exactly. If you wanted to get here and talk about how much you love or hate Donald Trump, for example... Oh, God. Sure. <laughs> we'll listen to it. No. If you want to sit in here and talk Let. about how you think the Yankees are the greatest sports team of all time, great. Sounds good. What I'll are listen. these topics, Logan? I'm not a sports girl. I'm pulling them out of thin air because if the guest wants to talk about it, yeah. the, the everyone always asks, what are we going to talk about? Whatever you want. So I want to ask, how has that been? Because here, like, I don't like scripted episodes either. Same. But I'm just thinking, like, what if you had somebody who's talking about something you have no idea about? Which I think there's, like, a, a good, like, space there. Like, you can learn something. But as the host, I yeah. feel like that would give me a lot of anxiety. There's some anxiety there. But I also treat it kind of like another inspiration to me. And in and, and all podcasters, whether you love him or you hate him, uh, Joe Rogan, he does have the biggest podcast on the planet. Yeah. So I do take some inspiration of the fact that... He sits across from people sometimes. You know, one episode, it might be a UFC fighter. The next, it might be Renee Zellweger. It might be uh, Tom Ford, Mm -hmm. even though he's he's dead. Um, It might be Tim Cook. It might be you. Right. Or it might be an astrophysicist. And Joe Rogan, I I have gone on record to think that I think he might be, this is going to sound insane. Uh Uh-oh. He might be the smartest man on earth because he has sat and talked to People from all walks of life. He's got thousands of episodes. This dude can talk. I've listened to an episode with him and like a, another comedian I love, and they'll just start talking about uh, hydrotherapy because <sighs> Joe Rogan has had these people on his show that know that are experts in these fields, and he just that man's brain has to be exploding. 
I can see the benefit of that because you get to be like a small subject matter expert on like a wide variety of topics. Right. Like he has sat with all these different people and like he, yeah, he might not know the first thing about nuclear theory, but <laughs> I'm going to have a guest on that knows all about nuclear theory so that I can learn it because I also love learning things. Yeah. I love school That's for the cool. reading, the writing and the learning. I hated the work, hated quizzes and tests yeah. and all that shit. Because we're ADHD. I loved, right. We hate I that love test anxiety. The, the learning of it. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's so cool. I had no idea. That's so neat. Like, I love that feeling of, like, like mind blown. Like, someone yeah. just taught you something you never knew. Yeah, it's I such a that. fascinating thing. So, I'm jealous of him that he's gotten, you know, he talks to people like Dr. Phil or Kid Rock or Sammy Hagar or like just Tom Fulton. Just a you know, anybody. wave of people. So, I'll sit and cross to. I'll sit and talk to anybody, whether you, I agree with you, disagree with you, because I don't feel like there's enough healthy discourse in nowadays. That's very fair. Like, why yeah. are you the way that, wh where did this start? You know, I will say this. I think, I, I do not think I could handle a Donald Trump episode. I, and you never know, like, what you can learn from somebody. But I'm just saying, like, I can't do Donald Trump at all. <laughs> Fuck that. But, um, yeah, no, thank you. But. I love Liz's podcast. She's got a great show. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope he doesn't love my podcast. It's well, you know, great maybe show. If Donald Trump listens to this podcast, maybe it might make him look inward. Hey, you know, may, some self love maybe, might maybe be a little he might go, You know what? Maybe, maybe I shouldn't be a piece of shit. Maybe he's got a little too much self love. No, I think his is like a narcissistic yeah. type thing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But on that note, that's about yeah. I try. I, I don't yeah, typically the, get that's too the political most po politics that we're gonna do. Here. Um, but it's just funny because like I've been on a tear about that shit lately. But so. on the same note, is it politics? It's just looking at a personality. True. True. It just so happens that he's a political figure. He's just a horrible His person. His attitude just sucks. Yeah, he's just, I hate him so much. <laughs> I really do. Like, I just, I think he's a horrible person altogether. But, and I must say, like, I'm kind of listening to you, like, the excitement behind, like, the learning and things. I, I, I'm, like, feeling that energy, and I'm like, man, I kind of like that idea, too. Because, see, I just did, like, a women's wellness series, and yeah. she is a friend. Her name's Bhavna. She is a neuro naturopathic doctor, and, like, I was... Not uncomfortable during the episode because I love her, but there's a there's a trust there. But we're talking about things that I have no familiarity with. I was gonna say you know I don't I mean? know what that word even means, <laughs> and I want to talk to her so that I can hear all about whatever you the hell should. This is. Oh my gosh, I'll connect you guys, Doctor okay. Singh. Okay. Um, but it's like a, kind of a holistic, functional medical approach to like healthcare. You okay. Know? Okay. Um, and she's like big about the gut. Okay. Like that's like her specialty, gut and hormones. But like during the interview, I'm thinking to myself, am I asking the right questions? Mm -hmm. Like, am I asking the right things? Is it gonna give her enough to kind of talk about this topic because I don't know the baseline. Right. So that's, it's very interesting that you embrace that. Well, you, that's, that's really cool. Well, you know, so, so some episodes are more casual than others. Mm -hmm. um, like an episode like her, I would try to do a little bit of research okay. to try to get like the questions thing. Like, geez, am I going to ask her what her favorite freaking movie is or karaoke song? You should. Like, and I will. Yes. Because like I said, I'm going to ask everyone those questions. You right. could be, you you could be Michelle Obama, and I'm going to ask you whether you like queso, guac, or salsa. <laughs> like, people who don't understand these references, hop over to our episode on you'll Friday, see. and you'll see. It's really fun, actually. Very fun. So, like, a few weeks ago, I interviewed a country music artist. I saw that. And she is up and coming. She's from Marietta. She's a local gal. She lives in Nashville now. But I did more research with her. You know, I listened to her music. I mm -hmm. read up on her backstory. I watched some of her clips on YouTube and take her music videos. I, I brushed up on her history. Yeah. So that I knew what to ask her. However, if I'm going to sit down with with you, no offense to you, I'm. It's a looser structure because you're. Again, there's a trust sounds, there. I think there's a trust. Right. But there's also a like every way that I want to say it sounds so horrible. <laughs> I was going to say I'm not intimidated. No, I know. By what you her, mean. I was intimidated because, like, you know, she's like the author that I had the horrible yes. experience with. Tune in for that. Yes. So many callbacks. You should, yes. Um, it's it's so great that we did this the same day. I agree. And this really cool space, by the way. Yes. Fireworks co-working. Fireworks co-working. I've never actually recorded like this kind of podcast studio, so very, very cool. It's even got the foamy things, guys. Yes, the soundproof. <laughs> Forget where I was going with that whole sentence because ADHD. Shit, sorry. Lost that it. was my fault. No, no, no. Oh, it's okay. The intimidation. Yes. So I and if I'm intimidated by them in the least bit, I'll do more research. Okay. Like for her, I would do more research for an author, even someone I know. Like if I were to talk to Stephen King, that'd be amazing. I'd love right. to have Stephen King. But Get in his brain for oh sure. Oh my God. Like what the hell? What the hell is happening? What the hell? How much meth have you smoked? What drugs were you on when you wrote it? I just want to know. For real. <laughs> for real. But like I'm going to do more research for him. Yeah. 
Whereas like I, a few months ago, I did a podcast with a, a friend who's now even a closer friend, the friend who's actually at the bachelor party that I okay, mentioned yeah. that I'm going on. And I recorded my longest episode ever with him. And we were sitting there for three and a half hours. Just shooting the shit. Just shooting the shit. Because yeah. at that time he was a, f- a friend, mm-hmm. but by another friendship. So you never like go to a friend's house and they have one of their friends that you wouldn't hang out with yeah, by yeah, yourself. Yeah. And you see them consistently because you see your your friend yeah. consistently. And you're like, man, these person's always cool whenever I'm seeing my friend. But I don't know them outside of my friend. Mm-hmm. So I texted him one day and I said, come over to my house. We'll set up there. We'll sit up, up on my living room couch. We'll grab some drinks and some snacks and we'll just talk. And if it lasts 30 minutes, great. Cool. Uh, but it lasted three hours. Wow. To the point where like we had, we took bathroom breaks. Like, <laughs> it was it was, like live so on it. Like. Didn't give a shit. Yeah. And it was amazing. And now I'm going to this guy's bachelor party. Hell yeah. Like, and we're invited to their wedding. Whereas I love like it. we might not have been before. Right. But like, I don't think I'm the sole purpose of that, but right, right, right. definitely like I know all about this guy now. Yeah. And I'm supposed to have it three hours. And sure. I did, right. And I didn't do any prep. I was just like, I'm just gonna talk to this guy. Yeah. We're just gonna figure each other out. And I figured him out. That's I kind of like that too, especially with fellow creatives and things like that. Because I always want to know the story behind, like why you did this. And I think yours is very interesting. You just got into this because you thought podcasting was cool. I got into it because I wanted to create my dream job, and that was connecting with people. And like, it's just it's really cool hearing the different variations that lead us down a similar path. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So let me ask you this. So. What are some of the, like, because you kind of take a blanket slate to your, your episodes, not ignoring like the research you will do on certain things. Sure. Have you had any awkward moments where you're like talking and it's like, I don't know where to go with this. Like, give me your awkward, like, ah, oh, shit moments of podcasting me. Well, I'll encourage those to jump over to mine so they can hear that crazy story. Oh Yeah. And you'll hear that on Friday. And it's a it's a crazy, like... Long I, story short, it was one of up. the classic, I forgot to press the record button. Yeah, I forgot to press record on an episode that I had been building up hype for for months. <laughs> Bless um, your heart. Now, I'm not laughing idiot. at your pain, but now knowing the story and hearing you say that. Like, I don't think about it often, God. but this, like, fucking idiot. Like, I can't believe I did that, but... But um, every podcaster has a story, I yeah, swear. If you happens. go to any podcast forum, they're like, ah, oh, God, it happened to me today, guys. Like, it, I, everyone has I used one. to be so, here's another whoopsie daisy. So I used to be so organized with like my, and I still am. Like, I have like a thing. You're so, you were always responsive. You were on it. Like, <laughs> like I'm like, I, sorry, it's like 12 hours for me responding, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I just love. Like, I, I love texting for that same reason. Yeah, like, yeah. even if it's, I don't know what email is, but like, it, it's almost like texting if you don't respond to me for 12 hours, texting, cool. Mm-hmm. But like email, like it's so weird. Like I blame so professional. Western corporate America. Yeah, there you go. Putting uh, that pressure on us. There you go. I got to respond right now. Oh my God. <laughs> more, more on corporate America on, on my episode. We keep, Fuck we, it. I keep plugging it. Fuck corporate America. So that's what I say. <laughs> hey, this is her show now. So <laughs> um, I hope my, my job doesn't see this. No, they, they I'm watch. like all my coworkers listening. Don't worry. I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, for real. I love all you people. Um, so, ADHD. I love it. Um, oopsie daisy. Oopsie like- daisies. I used to have this sheet where I would have all my notes planned out for my episodes. And one episode I hit record, open my note sheet, and there's nothing there. And I was oh, like, no. oh, fuck. <laughs> well, doing this on the flow. Another oopsie daisy in the lessons learned is the whole video thing. Figuring out what camera works, what doesn't work. Oh, oh matching God. up the audio and the video. It's such a bitch. Finding different softwares to make clips with. That's now why I you use need an, Descript. It's I, my favorite. Hey, Descript. Available. Uh, it sounds like an ad. It's right. not an ad. They if don't they sponsor want... me yet, but I did sign up for an affiliate link. So maybe if you click Descript, <laughs> I might get like a little kickback. <laughs> hey, and if, and if it works for her, jump on my train as well. We'd love to be like... Descript. Call your girl. I love it so much. <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm about to love it because I'm going to look into it. Yes, yes, but, yes. See, this is horrible. ADHD. It's a, it's a myriad of conversations. Yes. Multiple topics. So... The video thing is like, ugh, like, do I put the work in? Like, everyone wants to do video nowadays. You I want know. clips instead of static. The people posts. demand it. it. They do, and yeah. it sucks because, tell you the truth, I wish I didn't have to do video. Really? I think video is great so that people can see our facial expressions mm-hmm. and our body language and everything. It's like a talk show in a way. In a way, yeah. And uh, and more on that later. And I, I just, I, I wish that I, it w- I wish it was just audio. I wish okay. video wasn't a thing because. Not to sound like a complainer, but video is so much extra work. If it was just audio, I'd cut the thing, export my clip, upload it to my thing, and call it a day. 
All right, I'm gonna pause you there. Yes. You're gonna use the script after this, and then we're gonna recap. We're gonna reconvene in like two months after you've had a solid use of the script, and then you're gonna be like, I take it back. Video is great because it's like an all-in-one platform. This, this isn't gonna be me asking you features about the script, but I do have one question. So mm -hmm. the video camera that I had plugged into my camera, would I be able to select that as an audio device? Oh, son of a bitch. Yes, you can. Do you have to pay for the script to achieve a certain quality in video? Um, it's like $30 flat. I, th I think they do have like a cheaper one that's 15 that gets you up to 1080p, okay. but the 30 is like up to 4K, like 4K. but like it's worth it because you get all of the things. Okay. I mean, I- I'll do some research. Not to like go into like a whole nerdy tangent, but for anyone who wants to start a podcast or anything, and honestly, I'm just podcasting. Like I think it's like you make videos. Maybe you do vlogs. I know vlogging Absolutely. is huge on YouTube just now. This is an all-in-one platform that like, we, it's we need just to send so easy. To yeah. Send this, cut a clip of this I am. and, and I'm send say, it, tag them and say, sponsor us. Sponsor me. Or, or just send me 15 bucks a month to pay for your membership yes. and I'll do it. Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> but I love it. Yeah. Help some of the small guys out. Yeah. Kona We're doesn't gonna need be the help. somebody one day, just not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to sing on my I can see the total theater kid. Yes. Now. When I was describing my podcast, I was like, it's enlightenment and entertainment, and you get to really see me be awkward now. Yeah. I love it. Now I'm in your world. Yeah. Welcome to the freak show. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the, the video struggle. There's the- But it's a lot. Oops, I forgot to press Especially record. because it's just us doing it. Like, yeah. I don't have we a don't have a team. We are the team. Like Does, we are the talent, the producer, the director, the writer. All of the shit. I will get. I will get uh, yelled at if I don't mention my creative director. I do have a creative director right. that's involved. Okay. And she told me I have to refer to her as my creative director because all of my good ideas come Please from her. Please tell me this is your it's wife. It's my wife. I am obsessed. She. <laughs> she it. has come up with some of the logos, some of the <laughs> names. It. I'm pretty sure she coined your morning drive. I think it was her idea. My husband came up with the in between. Oh my god! So, so. they can have something to bond over. So she is the creative director. So shout That's to you. That's amazing. Heck yeah, baby girl. I love that. Catherine is the creative director um, because she's very creative in her own right as well. And um, That's cool. Yeah. It's Tangents. nice to have that. No, it is. Okay. It is nice. And it's nice to have like, and I'm sure your husband does this for you. They, once I get like, because you can tell like when I get excited about something, I get real emotional and really excited about yep. it. She grabs me and pulls me down and brings me back to reality mm -hmm. and like, Gives me the feed, like I said earlier, gives me the feedback that I need to hear. Yeah. Versus like someone who's just going to be critical and not supportive. constructive yeah. or supportive. She'll be like, okay, I like this, but have you thought about it this way? And it's like, huh. So like if I ever am up there on stage accepting my Emmy or Grammy or whatever it is. Not if, when. When that happens. Yes. Um, she, she's got to be the first person I thank. Oh, you know, for some sure. people are like, oh, I'd like to thank my agent. Uh, I'm going to be like, thanks for my creative director, Catherine Lewis. She kills it. She's the best. Yeah. And thanks for cleaning, cleaning the house on the side. Yes. Thanks for not locking the door. <laughs> <laughs> Did all the complimenting, had to throw a little jab. Right, in right, there. right, right, right. Right. Life. Close that garage door. Marriage. Yes. Um, anyway. I love that. I like to speak in like active verbs, like manifesting sure but not to even use that term but just like yeah it's like confidence like we are building towards whatever it is yeah, I like it so when you win that's yes. why I say when I have my TED talk when I get to meet Jeff Goldblum and he wears a sweater with my face on it and I wear a sweater with his face on it and we have the best episode ever and then they run off into the sunset sorry Stan sorry Jeff Goldblum's wife but that will happen one day he's married <laughs> Yeah, her name's Emily. See, I know way too much. <laughs> I'm way too involved. Because <laughs> you also have a plan on how you're going to get rid of Emily so that you can take No, I'm just going to join the throuple. It's more like what's Stan's role in this relationship? I'm not sure okay. yet. Okay. Maybe like we don't have kids yet, but I'm sure we'll have kids at that point. He can just go take care of the kids and let me just run off with Emily and Jeff. That's I'm just okay. fucking kidding. That's okay. I just love Jeff Goldblum. Hey, um, if she runs off, you can come hang out with me. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> He knows. I always joke. I'm like the one man. And I'm just kidding. I love Stan. I'd never leave him. Plus, of I mean, let's be real. Jeff is kind of old. So it'd probably be a old. very short-lived relationship. Yeah. I am going to have an episode one. with him. And he's going to wear a sweater with my shirt. Mm -hmm. Or a sweater with my face on it. And I'm going to wear a sweater with his face. Like, so weird. But so is he. Yeah. It works. It works. And it works. he knows. Yeah. He course. knows he's weird. He doesn't know me yet, but he knows that we're going to click. Like, just wait. Just wait for it. I just know I don't even know why I'm going off on like a total tangent about Jeff Goldblum, but here we go. You did it on my episode. It's only fair. Well, because you brought up Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's true. I can't believe that. So Jurassic Park, I love so much. You love Jurassic Park. I don't know where to go with that. Just that it's really nice to meet really, somebody who loves Jurassic Park. I had a really weird question just pop up in my okay, head. Okay, go. But it's a very Jurassic Park question. Go. <clears throat> also, side tangent. 
I definitely am going to get home today and my wife's going to be like, tell me about all about it. And I'm going to be like, I don't want to talk because <laughs> my throat, I can feel it. You yep. know, we've been talking for like so long. Yep. But do you have a favorite death that's so morbid, but like, let me think. My head initially calls back to the lost world when Eddie gets ripped out of the van and gets split into two by the mom and the pa T-Rex. That one's intense, but the one that I think about is in the first movie when the, what was it, the attorney? Like, like okay. Oh, uh, on the it's shitter. In the scene, yeah, when he oh, yeah. runs into the bathroom thinking he's going to be safe. And then the T-Rex is like, it's like, you know, the the big bad wolf. You huff yeah. and you puff and, and you blow blows, the house down. Literally blows literally, the walls the, the, down. He's like, psh, and he's like, ah! And then just eats them. Yeah, yeah. On the toilet. Little kid Liz was like scarred from that, but I still loved it somehow. And you know what? We talked about how we're, we were very disappointed with um, Jurassic World Dominion being uh, like this. Oh, it's going to tie the original cast together. And it's going to be this great big in thing. In a horrible way. In a horrible way. I was really hoping that the main villain. So I was watching this shitty movie, Jurassic World Dominion. And I was like, maybe, you know, maybe the main villain's death in this movie will be so great that I will appreciate it a little bit. I was very disappointed with the way he got murked. Everything was horrible. It was, it was. He, he got murked in like all the grasshoppers, right? The, yeah. The Ugh, little. In the little house. Yeah. Not house, but the green room or something. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. He got murked the harvest by those room. things. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, so boring. Spoiler I wanted to alert. see the Gigantosaurus or whatever it was, like right. rip him to shreds. Oh, and then like they redid the whole idea of like a crossbred created yeah. dinosaur. Yeah. yeah. We're getting nerdy here. I don't care. But in the world of reboots, those were horrible. Which would you rather, die by dinosaur or die by alien invasion? Um, I will say, oh, well, that's tough. Very that's serious. Like, very serious. That's tough because I am assuming I'm getting eaten alive by a dinosaur. Or you're getting stampeded, rambled. Or stampeded. And then for the alien flip side of it, I assume I'm getting experimented on first. Ooh, that's Probably just alive. Horrible. Yeah. I'm going to take the dinosaur death because it'll be quicker. Mm -hmm. I think the alien would be like, let's capture him. And Harvest. unless they just have like little Star Wars blasters and they blast <laughs> pew, pew, me pew, and then pew. I'm dead. Yeah. Or it's like a Marvel situation where you're in New York City and it's just like they're destroying it. And you get yeah. killed, and I get by, a killed by a building falling. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll take, I will take the aliens actually because the dinosaur death would suck. You know what my luck would be? I would be the guy in the Lost World Jurassic Park movie that is running and he tries to run inside the blockbuster or whatever it is yeah. when the J-Rex is stampeding through the streets and he targets the one guy. Yes. Not the horde of people running. But the he one sees guy. the one guy go off to the left. He kills that guy yeah. and he's, the noises he's he's like because oh, 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 oh. Yeah. he's like crushing his innards as he's like that would be me. I would be the guy who's just like, I'm going to run off and try to hide in the McDonald's. And the T-Rex is like, I want McDonald's and kills me. Yeah. I wonder what this says about our personalities. I have no idea, but I'm just curious. People listening probably think this is chaotic. They're like, wow, these guys are weird. Really, but really I love it. weird. But I, I love Jurassic that. Park. Love it. For a long time, I danced around it being my favorite movie. For the longest time, I was like, oh, The Lion King's my favorite. <laughs> right. But then I grew up and I was like, you know, The Lion King's a great up. movie. It's a great movie. It's, it's sad as hell. But it's sad and it's also a Disney movie. I know the themes, it's based on like Hamlet and everything, but like Jurassic Park, it's more of an adult movie. Right. For a while, I was like, oh, The Dark Knight's my favorite movie. But then I was like, but then is a Batman movie my favorite movie? Well, but Dark, we'll give Dark Knight a favorable mention. Because yes. that's like a very like deep psychological yes. kind of like version of Batman. Yes. And you know what? We talked about last episode of doing like a Jurassic Park commentary. Maybe here and there we can just do a movie commentary. I'm down for that. For, Absolutely. Jurassic Park Jurassic has to be the first, first one. Absolutely. And that and Jurassic World. We'll do like the first one and then the remake. Yes, that's I fine. like that idea. Because the remake was really good. Let me ask you this. People tell me this all the time. Such chaos on this episode. No, what? I love it. Chaos theory. <laughs> Dinosaur eats man, women inherit the earth. <laughs> 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 they, they turn their heads and look right. at it. Damn, I forgot my Chaos. thought. Chaos. Forgot it. Watching the movies, talking about it. Damn. Oh. oh, oh. He Some, found it. Train's I, here. I found it. Train of thought. People tell me frequently, I want you to tell me if you think I sound like this person. Okay. Do I sound, I want you to settle the score here. Do I sound like Chris Pratt? Keep talking. Okay. Now I have to like think about it. Keep yeah. talking. People, people say I sound like Chris Pratt. People I work with, people that I... I could hear that. Because people say sometimes I look like Chris Pratt. I'm like, oh, hold on. I look like Chris Pratt oh, when he was in... That whole sound like him, for Parks, sure. Parks and Recreation, Chris Pratt. Love uh, Parks and Recreation. <laughs> uh, I look like fat Chris Pratt. 
I don't look like Star Lord Chris Pratt. I am like, and I'm just, I have my eyes closed because I'm listening to you and not looking at you. But oh. no, I think you sound like him for sure. But what's also funny is people also say that I sound like or look like Jack Black. And I was like, ooh, that's not a good one. But that's because like with, when I talk, You're, my you eyebrows, eyebrows. Yeah. are very expressive. You have Jack Black eyebrows. Jack Black talks like But this. I wouldn't say you, you sound more like Chris Pratt, but you are more expressive characteristic like, like Jack, Jack Black. Black. Yeah. I feel like that's a pretty good combination. I think so. I love Jack Black. He's Who? somebody I would love to have on the podcast. Oh. He's such a cool guy. I feel so like cool. between Jeff Goldblum and Jack Black, I feel like Jack Black's more likely to do it too. Don't say that I, to I, me. You know what? I have a whole vision with Jeff, okay? You know, I texted you earlier and I said, all my best ideas come to me when I'm either driving or in the shower. And I thought of this today. I was like, I'm going to find a celebrity that I think is realistic to have on my podcast. Not okay. someone huge. Not like Barack Obama. He's never going to do it. He's never <laughs> going to do aim it. aim for the heights. <laughs> never going to do it. So I was thinking about like someone like Jack Black. Maybe he'll do it. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tag, starting tomorrow, Jack Black, or the celebrity I choose. Maybe it's Chris Pratt, because maybe he'll do it. He's doing a lot of voiceover stuff lately. Yes. So Maybe Chris Pratt will do it, and I'm going to tag Chris Pratt on Instagram every single day until he does it. Okay. And it's going to be a highlight reel on, like, on my on my Instagram profile. It's okay. going to be like Chris Pratt journey. That's a strategy. So if he ever sees it, he'll be like, oh my God, That's this guy actually, has tagged me every single day. Holy shit, and I'm then, doing that for Jeff Goldblum. You should. I'm seriously doing it. I added it to my reminders every morning at seven o'clock. Remind me to tag Chris Pratt on Instagram. That's so funny. And it might just be a picture of like my life or something. I'm just going to go through my camera roll. Add Jeff Goldblum. What you think, babe? <laughs> I'll be like day one of tagging Chris Pratt until you know and what? And then I'm, I'm doing served it. with it's like Chris a restraining Pratt. order, but that's okay. It's Chris Pratt. <laughs> yeah. He's either going to think, wow, this dude's a fan or he's going to think, wow, this dude is really cool. I should have him on one of my movies and <laughs> right. his career will take off. And then, uh, he'll be like my mentor. <laughs> I love Chris Pratt. <laughs> I just loved your whole like tangent about that. That's amazing. S. He's a good guy. Yeah. He's like a he seems like a solid guy. Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> seems genuine. You know, they all seem genuine. Yeah. Je Jack Black seems he genuine. Does. You would hate to find out that he was a dick. Oh my gosh. You would really hate I that. I know. I I refuse to think. That's like finding out the rock is a dick. I've heard that. Like the, the rock is a have dick. Have you seen the the Mario oh, yeah. um, Mario movie, the cartoon? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they actually have both Jack Black and Chris Pratt. Yeah. But I can't imagine someone going peach, 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 just being like Black. a not good person. Right. True. You know what I mean? Like right. you can't do that. Also, in, like, Jack Black was the only person that could do that. Oh, one thousand percent. If the roles were reversed and Chris Pratt played Bowser and Jack Black played Mario, which sounds chaotic and I kinda wanna see that now. Yeah. Chris Pratt couldn't have pulled no, that off. No, I think Jack Black could have part of pulled off Mario. Maybe, yeah. But yeah, Chris Pratt doesn't have the Bowser Wahoo. energy. Yeah, he could do that. It's a me, yeah, for that. sure. Yeah, no, you could do it. I understand the anger of not casting an Italian actor to play Mario. But or like, Luigi, because like Charlie Day Charlie did, Day. yeah. Yeah. But he like has a Luigi, because Luigi's a scaredy cat, and Charlie Day kind of has that like scared cat like, oh my vibe. God, oh my God, we're going to get found. We're going right. to get it. Have you seen Always Sunny in Philadelphia? He's always yeah. like the spaz. Or anything ever. Yeah. Horrible bosses. Yeah. That's oh yeah, he's one. always like, just like the one that's like, He's yeah. just the terrified friend. Yeah. yeah. 1,000 percent. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, we're manifesting here, guys. Jeff Goldblum for me and Chris, Chris Pratt, Pratt slash me. Jack Black for both of us. Yeah. There we go. Um, so I want to go back to you real quick yes. about your podcasting Tangent. journey. Tangent. No, I love it. No, I, I love these. That was our pop culture talk. That was no. good. And who knows? JP may come back up, right? Yes, right. And, well, and the fact that you said Parks and Rec, Clever obviously girl. that this thought has left the station. I don't know if I'll get it back, but we said something earlier where I really wanted to reference Parks and Rec. And now I know I can because you are a Parks and Rec fan. So I'll sure. remember that for next time. Sure, sure. Um, so what is like your goals with your podcasting? I know we're kind of getting towards the end of the episode. So I want to end it like, <clears throat> and you don't have to have anything epic necessarily, but like, do you want this to be your job? Like you talked about Hammerhead Creations or, or we talked about Hammerhead Creations at the beginning. And this is like your media company in a way mm -hmm. that you umbrella all your podcasting under. Like, do you see yourself being like the head of a network where you have a bunch of podcasts underneath you? Because it sounds like in all your brandings and the different like ideas and variations you've had, you have that talent. You can not just like spot talent, but you've got ideas. Yeah. And like, yeah. I mean, to hear you juggle that many podcasts at a time, that blows my mind away. So I'm just curious because you started all of this without any intention. You just started this as, yeah. as a hobby, mm -hmm. almost, if, I, yeah. if that's okay to say. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe things have changed since you've been doing this for so long, so many years. So I the, the, the end goal is like the podcast, it evolves. Mm -hmm. And I think the first step of it is making it my full-time job. Yeah. Like if I could, if I could find a way 
as you know, the the so difficult way to make it a full time job, right? To be able to make money off of advertisers and you do not make money in the beginning. It is so hard. No, and I mean I've been doing it for six seven years, yeah. and it, it it still hasn't happened. That no. doesn't mean it's not going to happen for someone else right. in that time, but it just hasn't happened for right. me. So it would absolutely be the main goal to to do that. I have ideas. Um, I mentioned to you on my episode that um, I knew somebody, and this was part of the horror story, that did like a dramatization on audio form, like okay. a production on audio form. I would love to do that. I would love to write a eight-episode miniseries and put it out via audio form, hire my friends and family to be the actors and actresses. I would love to do that. So like be an author in a way. Absolutely. Because I also want to write, this is... I guess a creative thing. I'd love to write a children's book. In the That's totally a creative in thing. In the very near future. Like, yeah. I'm trying to write it and have it finished written by Christmas of this year. Oh, that's cool. I want to have it written. Because I oh. do know somebody that owns a publishing company, and I would absolutely publish with them. So this is a realistic thing for me. I love that. I would love to do this. Um, so I'd love that aspect. To aim for the stars, I'd love to have a, my own talk show. Yeah. I don't know if that's on YouTube. I don't know if that's on a network. I don't... I, I, Preferably maybe not a network because I don't want to be told not to be myself. Right. Um, right. I don't respond well to that. No. When someone comes in and says, hey, your personality, you need to tone it down a notch. Fuck you. No. I have a sticker that says, if I'm too much, go find less. Wow. It's in the middle too. Yeah, it is. I love that a lot. Yeah, there's some wisdom for you. I would, it, facts. <laughs> I, would love, I would love to have a main... I would love to have a company where I am the boss mm-hmm. and uh, the boss. No. I'd love to be a great leader for a lot of younger creatives like yeah. you and me are right now. Yeah. I'd and show them the ropes and protect them. The do's and don'ts. Because there's so many things you don't know and, mm-hmm. and things like that. So absolutely. I would The whole podcast network thing, I have entertained that idea as well. Mm-hmm. And I, I've, I've thought about forming a small time podcast network. And there's not really any like... There's not any stipulations with it. It's just like, hey, if you want to associate your name with my name and my name with your name, cool. If either of us takes off, then we'll talk about what that looks like. Yeah. But like, just kind of like cross promotion, people working together. I've thought about like getting like a an Atlanta, like a Metro Atlanta, like podcasting group started, if not one already. Oh yeah. Like almost like a networking thing. Oh my God, why thing. have we never thought about that? Or putting on some kind of live show and having a bunch of like podcasters come out. I would yeah. love for that to happen. That's a goal of mine to do by next year. I think I would uh, love to help you with it. Yeah. In any capacity. Yeah. Because. Even if three people show up and those are like your wife, my husband, and my mom. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's facts. Fine. Facts. Being able to say that you've done it though. Right. And adding it to the list of accomplishments so right. that like if a network is looking at us and they're like, oh, these two have put this on. Right. Like I, I, I'm ready for it. Yeah. Um, I would Same. love, I would love all of that. I mean, all of those or one of those. Right. Or, you know, and I, I went to my first live podcast show this year I've and like, there's no, before. there's no flow to it. No. Like, it's just basically like how your topics are where you're just like, what, whatever you want. That's yeah. kind of like the vibe that it was. Yeah. And you're vibing off the audience right. as well. And of course, like that podcast, like they have their sticks. So they're kind of talking about those things, but like more or less, there was not a structure to it. Right. It's like a uh, smart list. Have you ever, yes. Have you ever seen those guys? Yeah. Like all, all, also, the fact that, again, their name is selling them. Yes. Will Arnett, Sean Hayes, and Jason Bateman. That's selling the tickets. Right. And yeah, they're probably fans of the podcast, too. Right. But like, it's those it, they, three the actors together. Yeah. They are getting ticket sales from right. that. But like, Especially Will I, Arnett. <laughs> I have no hesitation. And this isn't cocky. This is confidence. I have no hesitation. And I know, as much as I know about you already, I don't know about your like external life of this. Mm-hmm. I have no hesitation to think that we couldn't fill up a room for, of 200 people. Oh, 1,000%. 200 people. Yeah. Even 100 Especially people. if it's local. If it's you know, local. If it's Atlanta, like, I think we could. Because people are also going to be drawn to it because they just find it. Like, yes. oh, it's like a culture thing. That, you know? Yeah. That, I feel like we could get 200 of our closest friends and families that are local and they would come. And there's like this... Um, and people who want to know us that right. don't know us. Exactly. And there's this, um, oh my gosh, what's it called? It's like in the Pont City Market area, like shopping center. It's like the Atlanta winery or something. Very small venue, easy to sell out. It's like 65 seats. You could we could start there. We could go in and say, oh, it's like even if we're paying them to host us, right. we don't have to know. And like, we who probably cares? will. We yeah. probably will have That's to. That's okay. Host. But we gotta start somewhere. Same thing with um I know a venue in downtown Kennesaw. 
Mm -hmm. There's a studio mixing. A lot of artists actually record music in this place. This is really cool. It's kind of hidden. But they have in their backyard a little stage that could probably fit like lawn chairs of like 200 people or so. Oh, that's a lot of people. I'm going to use this guy. Yeah. We're going to perform there. Perform. You know what? And I agree with you. I bet there is. I have no doubts that we could. Do I think we could do a 25 city show? Maybe not quite this moment, but you never know. But you start there, then you have like that content and you posting all of it. And that's like, it gets you noticed in in other areas. And I don't know. Did we just brainstorm something that we're going to do this year or next year? 1000%. I think it'd be great. Yeah. And I think we have very similar personalities and styles that people can listen to us. They find us funny. They Mm -hmm. like, they can learn something Mm -hmm. or they just wanted to come out, have a good time. They want to, for, for me, they want to grow themselves. They want to love themselves completely and they want to giggle along the way. That's it. Yeah. Make you feel good. Like I always say, entertained and empowered. Like Almost that's having, what I want. Oh my God. I'm like thinking about this in real time. Almost <laughs> having like a music festival, but for like local, small podcasts. People. And the yeah. headliner is you and or you. you or me or both of us. Yeah. And. Each each it. podcaster gets thirty or forty five minutes to just do their thing, mm-hmm. and they get up and go, and mm-hmm. they can have they can sell merch if they want to. Yeah, you can involve that audience, have like a live Liz. podcast. That's one thing I've always Liz. wanted to do is do a live podcast and like ask people like, what's a piece of advice that changed your life? What is like so, a moment in your life that like, and it could be funny, it could be small, it could be serious. Like, what is something impactful to you? And I, I think about like how just the magic that could come from something like that. So. Well, it's cool to know that you have similar goals because I'm always curious because yours started as a hobby. Mine started off as like, I want to make my dream job and I feel like this might be the vehicle to get me started because talk show, TED Talk, I think I talked about on your yeah, podcast. Oh yeah, oh like yeah. that's kind of how, I want to be a TED Talker, but how do you be a TED Talker? And now I'm like, I will have a TED Talk one day and it's going to be all self-love because that is, I dare that use a used. stupid business term. It's the core value of the in-between yeah. is self-love because yeah. with self-love, anything is possible. As cheesy as that sounds. So, well, this has been so fascinating. I know. I feel like we've talked about nothing but everything. Yeah. No, I agree. And I'm not exhausted, even though it was like, nope. we talked about a bunch of different things. So but I, I will that. not lie. I'm going to get home and not open my mouth for no, the rest of the day. I, I do know we've talked about a lot because I'm starving. Yeah. So I'm like, how much energy have I burnt right now? So, yeah. um, well, for everyone listening, Logan, where can they find you? Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. This is so much fun. Oh, I can't so much wait. fun. We, you, people at this point would be stupid to think that this isn't happening again. Yeah, um, right. We are doing the Jurassic Park play by play. That and we, I feel like we have some potential in terms of like real business. Oh yeah. Like 1,000 things percent. are coming. 1,000 Things percent. will happen. It might not be tomorrow. It might not be next month. It might not be next year, but it'll happen. Oh no. It, it'll be next it'll year. It'll be next year. <laughs> It'll be next year. Love we'll it. have the details finalized by the end of the year and something will happen next year. And we'll open that show with like this clip. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, love that. Um, but I'm pumped too. Yes. So to find me, your <laughs> Wait, morning. Where was I going with this? Yeah, where ADHD. Uh, you can find me, Logan A. Lewis is my personal on Instagram. Um, on Instagram, also your morning drive, and that's all for all platforms: Apple, Spotify, YouTube. Just your morning drive. The logo is a little coffee cup, but it looks like a microphone as well at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, she mentioned Hammerhead Creations. That's kind of my parent marketing, podcasting kind of vehicle. Uh, HammerheadCreations.com. That's it. I love it. I think. I always wonder, if, like, did I plug myself the right way? I, I launched a website like a month ago, and I always forget to plug it, ironically. Yeah. And I did the website so I would not have to plug all the things. So, yeah, well, you know, hey, we are faking it till we make it. We're it. all just out here. We're all that's mad it. here in the yep. words of Alice Wonderland. But uh, thank you so much, Logan. This has been so much fun. Um, I don't always talk about pop culture, and I love when I get to just really nerd out. Yes. So thank you for that. Of course. Um, and for those listening, you know where to find me. If not, check me out on Instagram at in.betweenpod and at Elizabethini underscore. And, yeah, I'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye.